Hey guys, today we're going to look into this new tool in Affinity Designer. This tool was just added in version 2.1. I'm talking about the vector flat fill tool, also called a bucket tool, a long awaited tool, especially for people that switch from Corel Draw to Affinity Designer. And it's finally here. So let's take a closer look. Before we start, if this is your first time here, keep in mind, I got over 300 tutorials mostly about affinity family so if you are into designer photo or publisher please consider subscribing to this youtube channel so you can see more of my content later all right so here i am in affinity designer let me just draw some shapes i'm going to just do very simple stuff at first here's my square and then I will maybe draw a just a circle and they are overlapping as you can see. That's exactly what we need here because this bucket tool over here look like a little bucket. This will fill areas with a new vector shape. So I selecting both shapes, grabbing my bucket tool and you should be able to see it already that is highlighting certain areas. Let's just try to use a default settings and click on this area here. All right, I end up filling this with color. You may notice that this area was like empty before. So let me just undo that using command Z and I will switch from stroke color to fill color. Just want to show you that this will works perfectly fine in that setting as well. Even though we cannot see this area here in the center, intersecting area, if I click on it, I generate a new vector shape, a proper vector shape. But on my layer panel, you may notice that it's not there. When you open the ellipse, you see that this curve is like inside this as the child layer. It's maybe handy, but sometimes you would be dragging this out all the time. So actually you can change insertion mode here. Take a look. By default, we are inserting a new shape inside. We can change it to in between. All right, let's try again now. So if I select it now, Let's grab a bucket tool. Now we can set up the color for the next shape. If I insert, click over here now, take a look, a new curve appears as a regular layer, not as child layer. And actually that's my preferred method. So everything is on equal terms here. So that's one thing you can adjust straight away. It's this option, insertion mode by default is inside. As a child layer, you can change in between here. What's next? We got this add on the top, turn on right now. What else can we do? We got smart refill and also we got knock out. If you grab knock out, take a look what will happen. All right, seems like nothing special happened, right? We, we make a new shape on this intersection, but take a look. We knock out, we kind of delete part of the shape below that as well. Okay, so as you see, there are a few settings we can adjust, but in general, by default, we can put a color in a proper vector shape on any intersecting part of other shape. It will also work with lines. So if I draw one line here, let me just show you on this example. So we got one line here and there is totally separate line here and one more line here. So we got three separate lines, as you can see, I can still use this area inside to push a color in it and create a shape. So that's nice. It's not only about shapes, it's also about lines. 
So let's try to use this in a practical approach. Let's grab a, let's say maybe we will go with some kind of stars. So I will grab a star tool. I can select multiple points using the slider at the top. We can make some adjustments here, just like that. Then I can duplicate this. Command C, Command V in this case. Can make it a bit smaller. I'll make it 24 this time. All right. And as you can see, we create some kind of combination of two shapes. What if I want to recolor only this area here? If I grab the shape below, change the color, the whole shape just recolor. So that's not what I want. But we can use this brand new bucket tool to push a new color only in the certain areas. Take a look very quickly. That's nice. We create a brand new shape for each element here. So that's really, really nice. And you may also notice that we got uh, this outline nicely above it. So we got separation of that. So program literally take care of everything for us in that case. So even you are like amateur, you're supposed to make a little mistake, but program fix that for us before it even happened. So that's really good. This tool is pretty new, but they already put few improvements in it. And I'm happy with this new tool. It's great addition to our shape builder. This way we can also create new shapes by simply using intersections. So that's one example. What if we go even harder on it? I will draw this ellipse here. Using no tool, I will modify two nodes to be sharp just like this. Okay, let's go without fill color. And if we do some rotation and play with power duplicate, so I press in command J. This whole tutorial about power duplicates, so you can check on that if you never use this. I can create some kind of nice geometric shape. And you know what? Before it was really a nightmare to color, but now with this brand new bucket tool, we can just grab it, select all of the shapes, and then very, very quickly we can push colors inside as we please. Huh? That's really nice. And the best part is you are not filling this with any kind of bitmap, it's pure vector. That's what I like about it. We got the proper vector feel here. And as you can see, we can play around with this. We can feel any close area, any intersection is detected perfectly. And the shapes inside, let's zoom in and inspect them, huh? We don't need to trust me. Take a look. This guy is a perfect shape with only four nodes, as it should be. So there's nothing to be worried about. You can just grab your bucket tool and start filling in your vectors and you will generate additional vector shapes very quickly and you can easily manipulate the color of those smaller shapes. I hope this video tutorial was helpful. As I mentioned, I got more than 300 tutorials by now. <laughs> so don't forget to check maybe some older videos to learn more about affinity tools. I hope I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.